From the very early developments of engineering mega structures and machines, there had been a constant quest to find ways of designing structures that were lightweight and could provide enough stiffness and strength. Early structures and machines were made of wood and stones. Hence, appropriate designs were developed to achieve stiffness and strength. However, this changed with the invention of new man-made materials. Despite many high-performance materials, design has played important roles in making structures and machines lighter and stiffer. We find particular way the structures are made in which straight links are connected to make truss. A truss consists of many straight links joined together to make many triangles. Your bicycle frame or the roof support structure are the simplest forms of trusses. The truss structure takes the structural load and distributes the load in such a way that there is least deflection or bending of any member of the truss. This ensures lightness with stiffness. Many different designs have been tried. However, two important shapes that will be often seen are triangles and circles. This roof structure at Kyoto JR station has triangular trusses which together make an arch. Just like triangles, circular or semicircular arches are very efficient in distributing loads uniformly with minimum deflection to the structure. These arch looking trusses are designed to take the load of the roof of a shopping mall. Lightness, stiffness as well as strength are paramount. The truss is a collection of triangles. Breezes are also designed to take enormous loads. They must be light otherwise they will collapse under their own weight. The bridge structure must be stiff for proper functioning. This is a suspension type balanced cantilever bridge with distance between the two main towers of 460 meters. Enormous load of vehicles, pedestrians and trams are taken because of the trusses that form part of the cantilevers. The fourth bridge in Scotland is another suspension cantilever type bridge. Here too, the trusses show triangular shapes. The iron bridge is the oldest metal bridge in the world. It was made of cast iron entirely. This was not made of truss but using arches, which was the norm at that time for stone bridges. In this bridge, we can see a circle fitted inside a triangle. They were not welded but tied using nuts and bolts. Welding cast iron was not possible. This circular part inside a triangle provided load bearing function for the bridge. There are many other structures where truss of triangles is used as in the case of cranes. For some cranes, the cross section of the main boom is also made in triangular form as in this case. These masts which maintain excellent stiffness during deployment are made of, out of triangular trusses with triangular cross section. This is asteroid catching arm of a space station which has triangular cross section. Visually very appealing monument, the Eiffel Tower relies for its lightweight and stiffness on the trusses which are mainly collections of triangles. One central arch can be seen on each of the four sides. These semicircular arches impart stiffness to the tower as much as to its beauty. These examples have shown that two geometrical shapes are very important in engineering which are central to structures and machines. 
and they are triangle and circle. Let us see why triangular and circular structures provide stiffness or rigidity which other shapes may not. This is a square with two corners rigidly fixed. We apply a force on one of the free corners as shown. The resultant effect will be the bending of the structure in the direction of force until the reaction force in the structure due to bending balances the applied force. At equilibrium, there will be considerable amount of overall deflection of this truss. If the force is applied at the middle of the top link, then again there will be large deflection as there is no direct reactionary force opposing the applied force. There must be certain amount of deflection in the structure before the applied force can be balanced by reactionary forces. Now, if we consider a triangle and apply force in the transverse direction, there is a component of the reaction force in the link that directly opposes the applied force. There will be two components of the reaction force from each link. Thus, the applied force can be equilibrated with minimum distortion to the links. This is the force balance diagram. Now, if we apply the force vertically downward, in this case too, the reaction force will be in equilibrium with the applied force. Any distortion of the structure will be very minimum. If we take the case of a circular piece, then again there will be component of the reaction force that will act after very minimum distortion of the circular member. There is gradual transfer of the load in the case of circle, which means there will be no stress concentration at any given point. If we consider solid objects, then the triangle and circle may be seen as triangular prisms and cylinders respectively. The triangular prism and cylinder will be better load-bearing components than the square or rectangular boxes. Thus, in engineering structures and machines, two shapes are often used for stiffness in the structure with light weight. These are triangles and circles. To take the advantage of both, we can make a circle inside a triangle. So that was the background of the motivation for doing this exercise which is to inscribe a circle inside a triangle. This method is applicable to any type of triangle. So draw any triangle. Bisect any two of the three corner angles. Bisect another corner angle. It can be any one of the remaining two. Now, we found the intersection point of the two bisectors. 
This point will be used as the center of the inscribing circle. Now from the intersection point, drop a perpendicular on any of the sides of the triangle. It can be on any side. The shortest distance from the intersection point to any side of the triangle is the radius of the inscribed circle. The intersection point of the bisectors is the center of the circle. Now you can draw a circle which will touch the sides but remain totally inside of the triangle. The triangle sides are tangents to this circle. Now I will show you the method of circumscribing a circle outside a triangle, which is a circle that passes through the three corners of the triangle. Draw any triangle. Draw perpendicular bisectors of any two sides of this triangle. This line is both bisecting this side of the triangle and is also perpendicular to this side. Do the same for another side of the triangle. The intersection point of these two perpendicular bisectors will be the center of the circumscribed circle. Distance from this intersection point to any of the corners of the triangle is the radius. Thus, we can draw the circle which circumscribes the triangle. Dimension of the inscribed circle is quoted in some cutting tools like carbide tools. For example, in the specifications of the cutting tools, inscribed circle diameter is given. In some old metal bridges like the iron bridge, circular pieces were used instead of triangles. The reasons being, first welding was difficult due to the fact that mostly they were made of cast irons. Second, the designs still used compressive loading as was done before for stone bridges and structures. Tensile loading was simply avoided in structures. In this picture, it is interesting to see that a new bridge which is next to the old one uses a truss with only triangles. Obviously, it is made of steel and not cast iron. In this picture, you can compare the cast iron bridge with the stone bridge as both are arch type, which is efficient for compressive loading of the material. In this video, we learned how to inscribe a circle inside a triangle and how to circumscribe a circle outside a triangle and the engineering applications of triangular and circular shapes in load bearing structures and machines. Thanks for watching this video, if you have any query or comment, you may write them below in the comment section.